Good morning, good morning. Hey guys, I hope you're having a fantastic day. I'm Dr. Annette and we are here to talk about insulin resistance today and what you can do about it. So first things first, I have a special gift for you. If you watch all the way through this, I'm gonna tell you how to get a free guide that you can just get sent directly to your messenger box, no strings attached. Um, but we're talking about insulin resistance today and this is like a, a play off of yesterday's video. I wanted to make sure that you, um, understand that you don't lose weight to get healthy you get healthy to lose weight you can't do it the other way you can't lose weight to get healthy so if you're doing fad diets like the adkins diet where all you eat is meat um, or some other cabbage diet or whatever diet it is that you're doing to lose weight losing all of that weight is never going to be helpful to you unless you actually get healthy as well. You have to get healthy, have to, have to, have to. And the ways to get healthy are things that do not necessarily come natural to us because we've not been educated on how to live a healthy life. Now, our grandparents, my grandparents, all had gardens and they raised their own food. They either had cows or they killed animals and ate rabbits and squirrels and deer and all of those things. Um, my grandparents were much, much healthier people. They literally lived to be rather old, you know, older than 70, some of them almost to 100 years old, and they ate a much healthier diet than we do. And of course, now there's the debate that the soils are not as good and and the water isn't as clean and all of those are factors and the world we live in has so many things like toxins and heavy metals and things like that that affect our health so getting healthy can be a bit of a challenge for some people especially those that have been exposed to things that they've had no control over and um you know sometimes it's a challenge so um oh check it out check out my globe i got that yesterday isn't that cool i absolutely love to travel so i just had to have that for my office but um I wanted to talk about that for you. So it's, um, it's necessary to get healthy in order to lose weight. If you lose weight to get healthy and you don't get healthy in the process, you're just going to gain the weight back. Does that make sense? So oh, here we go straight into it. Insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is a problem for a lot. And I mean a lot of Americans because of all of the processed foods we eat. Uh, the lack of exercise that we get, and the fact that we have food available to us 24-7 and we usually take advantage of it. Tell me, give me a comment below if you eat more than twice a day. If you have more than two times a day where you put food in here, comment below. Let me know how many times a day you catch yourself actually eating something, snacks or meals, whatever. There for a while, people were trained to eat five or six meals a day to keep their blood sugar level. Well, I don't want you to keep your blood sugar level. I want you to keep your blood sugar very, very low, as low as you possibly can. And I also want you to keep your insulin levels as low as you possibly can. And insulin is something that most people are not talking about quite yet. It's coming. They're gonna be talking about it soon. It's on the horizon. I see it coming. I predict that people are gonna start getting their insulin tested more frequently than they're getting their blood sugar tested. Yes, Pamela, absolutely. I love that. Hey, Janet, you eat more than twice a day? Yeah, it's a habit that we've gotten into. You know, back when, say, when our grandparents or their grandparents were young, living in the United States, trying to carve out something for their, um, their families. Sorry, hang on, I gotta turn. I gotta plug in my other device here. It says it's low on battery. There we go. Um, they were out working in the field all day. So they might get up and eat a breakfast, but then they would go out and work in the field all day and they would absolutely burn off all of the food they ate for breakfast. I mean, I would venture to guess it doesn't even matter what they ate for breakfast at that point, even though they really didn't eat bad. 
But if they did eat bread for breakfast, all those carbs, first of all, it had more fiber in it. It wasn't processed. But second of all, they burnt that off because they were out physically working all day long. And then they might have a small lunch and then they might have dinner. But if you're physically working, you need more food. If you're sitting at a desk all day, you need much less food to build energy. So the symptoms of insulin resistance, whoop, I have them right here. Um, do you have belly fat that you can't get rid of no matter what you do? Do you, do you start to lose weight and then stall? Do you bloat during the day? Do you wake up feeling nice and thin and then as the day goes on, you feel more and more and more bloated? Do carbs actually make you happy? Like, ee, I'm gonna get some carbs, yay! Then chances are you're you're insulin resistant. If you're sometimes absent-minded, you go in the kitchen and you can't remember why you went in there, or you go in the living room and you're like, why am I here? If you're having memory issues, like where did you put your keys? Where did you put your children? Um, when was the last time you did something? Um, do you get hangry? Do you literally feel like you have to eat or something is going to go terribly wrong? Maybe you get shaky. Do you feel like you have to take a nap after you eat lunch? Does your vision seem to get worse as the day goes on? Do you, as your day is progressing, do you find that your vision seems to get worse? Are you not satisfied after you eat? Do you eat something and then 15 minutes later be like, I need something, especially if you need something sweet. Like if you eat and then you're looking for dessert shortly after that, you're insulin resistant. If you're craving things like carbs and sugar, you're probably insulin resistant. And if you wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom, chances are you're insulin resistant. You should not need to wake up in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. I don't care who you are or how much water you drink. You should be able to sleep all night without getting up to go to the bathroom. Simple fact. So those are a lot of the symptoms that people get when they're insulin resistant. And can you not think that um, pretty much, I keep doing the wrong thing, pretty much everybody you know has some or all of those symptoms. That's because we, as people in America, um, have access to too much food and we utilize too many processed foods. We don't eat enough raw, and I don't mean raw as in not cooked, but I mean like raw as in fresh vegetables and meats and things like that that are good for us. So did you get those? Do you need me to keep those up a minute? Um, the symptoms of insulin resistance. You can always come back and watch this again later. Okay, so now what is insulin resistance? Insulin resistance is very common, very common. And I would say that most people that have insulin resistance don't even know they have it yet. So insulin is actually the key that opens the door to the cell to let sugar in. That's what it does. And, um, oh, I thought I was going to move that, but I was wrong. I was going to say, are you watching this live or on the replay? But, ah, oh, there we go. Are you live or on the replay? Tell me. I want to know. I'm curious. Curious minds want to know. Are you live or on the replay? Um, insulin is the key that opens the door, that lets the fuel in, the sugar into the cell. Ketones don't need insulin. They don't need anything to get into the cell. Um, people that have insulin resistance are five to seven, they have five to seven times more insulin in their body than a healthy person does. Five to seven more times, which is a problem because insulin is inflammatory to the system. It actually causes um, damage to your system. There was actually a guy, a scientist, that was doing some studies on rats some time ago that actually spilled some insulin directly onto the inside of an animal, like he had it cut open, and he was shocked at how damaging that little drop of insulin was to the inside of that rat. So insulin is not healthy for you. It's not good to have a lot of it floating around in your body. And if you're insulin resistant, you have five to seven times more insulin than a healthy person, which guess what? That opens you up for a lot of other problems. 
So insulin can damage vessels and tissues, blood vessels and tissues. It also increases fat storage. So the higher your insulin levels, the less fat you're going to be burning. And if you're one of those people that's already insulin resistant and you're trying to burn fat for fuel, even the tiniest little infringement can stop your fat burning process for 48 hours or more. So just eating chicken fried steak with the bread on it, guess what? You just tossed yourself out of fat burning mode for at least 48 hours, at least, at least 48 hours. Um, so that's like, Ugh, that's the bad, bad, bad deal of it, right? So, the dangerous effects from insulin resistance, diabetes, which causes heart disease, fatty liver, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, stroke, dementia, and Alzheimer's. All of these things are part of insulin resistance. Now, you can't have diabetes without insulin resistance. They come in... in Two, and I'm talking type two diabetes. Type one diabetes is a whole nother story. Um, but fatty liver disease, a lot of people think fatty liver disease is caused by fat. It's not. It's caused by your body storing fat because you got because you have too much sugar, too many carbs in your system. So your body starts to store fat everywhere it can. It's storing the sugar as fat, and that's how you get a fatty liver. And a lot of people think fatty liver comes from eating fat. That is not how that works. So how do you reverse insulin resistance? Oh, and if you're watching, I told you, see that intermittent fasting down there at the bottom? That's going to be the topic of tomorrow's video. If you want the free guide on intermittent fasting, just type the word fast, F-A-S-T, if you're on Facebook, and my bot will automatically send you the intermittent fasting guide that I created something just for you to look at and be prepared for tomorrow's video. So just type F-A-S-T, fast, in the comments and it will send it to you automatically. So how to reverse insulin resistance? Low carb lifestyle, less than 20 net carbs a day. Do you know what 20 net carbs means? It means a total carbs minus fiber. And then if you get real particular, you can also do minus erythritol or stevia. Nothing else, just those three things. Fiber, erythritol, and stevia can be taken out of the carb count if you're doing net carbs. I highly recommend a diet of 20 net carbs per day. And I also recommend that you include leafy green vegetables. But let's go down the list. You need to eat fatty proteins. Low fat proteins actually are not as good at slowing down the insulin response as higher fat proteins. So if you're eating hamburger, make sure you get the higher fat version. If you're eating um, ribeyes, make sure you're getting three to six ounces. Don't overdo it. Eat chicken thighs instead of chicken breasts, or at least add some fat to them. Have avocado, something with it. Make sure you're having fat with any protein that you eat. Never combine meats and carbs. Sandwiches are out the door. Wrap it in lettuce, do whatever you have to do, but do not eat bread and meat at the same time. Um, increase your leafy greens. Eat vegetables that are grown above the ground. Make sure that you're getting lots of fiber, getting lots of healthy, fresh, raw sometimes, not always. Some vegetables are better cooked. Increase your vegetable fats, coconut oil, avocado oil, MCT oil, those kinds of fats, olive oil, olives, those kinds of things. Eat three to six ounces of meat at a time. Manage your stress. If you have a very stressful life, you need to find a way to deal with it. You need to find 30 minutes a day where you can go for a walk, do something by yourself, yoga, meditate, whatever it is, put it on your schedule and start doing it. It will help mediate your stress and it will help your adrenals not be so active. And when your adrenals are super active, it actually causes you to gain weight around the middle because it increases your insulin response. So managing stress is gonna be very important if you're trying to get healthier so that you can lose weight and practice intermittent fasting. So if you're interested in the intermittent fasting guide, just type the word fast, F-A-S-T below, and my bot will send that out to you right away. Um, and let me see, I can actually, I can actually put this here. So, I'm gonna put this right out here so that you can see it. Oops, I picked the wrong thing. That is not gonna work. So, but if you comment the word fast, 
then you can actually, I'm just gonna pop that in there and I'm going to pull it down here on the gray. There you go. So comment fast. Woo! See that? Comment the word fast to get your free guide. Hey, Rebecca. Um, so if you comment the word fast, I'll send you your free guide. If you're in Facebook, if you're not on Facebook, go to Facebook and comment the word fast. My bot will send it to you automatically. So thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you very much. And I don't know why that little block stayed there, but we're going to delete it. Yes. So make sure you comment the word fast. Make sure you come back tomorrow. We're going to be talking about intermittent fasting tomorrow and all the benefits of intermittent fasting and how intermittent fasting can help reverse insulin resistance and help you get healthier so that you can lose that weight. So come back tomorrow, 1030 on Ask Dr. Annette. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you so very much. And just in case nobody told you today, you are an amazing, unique individual and the world needs you to show up exactly as you are. So don't change to make somebody else happy. Just be you. And sorry about that. And come back tomorrow. Love you guys. Have a great day.